Captain Gavin? We're here. Not long after the escape from the observation center, Gavin was leaning against a car door, feeling like his consciousness was unusually heavy. He clearly heard a voice, but he was unable to snap himself out of his feeble state. He squeezed his hand into a tight fist, and the stabbing pain in his palm finally brought him back to his senses. As he opened his eyes, he was met with the concerned gazes of his squad members. One squad mate spoke first. Captain Gavin, do you need to take a break? I'm fine. Gavin shook his head, already perking up from his former state as he stood up and stepped out of the car. Before him was a familiar building. Gavin slowly exhaled and strode toward the entrance of the base. Along the way, everyone saluted him, some with indifference and some with reverence, but all with a deeply hidden fear. Captain Gavin reporting in, sir. Gavin entered his superior's office, only to be greeted with a scowl. You look like you're in terrible shape. If you don't want to die anytime soon, you should take better care of yourself. His words were merciless. But Gavin ignored him and continued on with what he had to say in a hoarse voice. Before I left Special Task Force, the Evolution Chamber had already been transferred. I've already been informed of this matter. The man sitting behind the desk raised his eyebrows and slammed the document he'd just finished reading on the desk. He looked to be 28 or 29. His face was strong and ruddy, yet unmarred by the scars of battle and a bit lax. The live stream incident earlier has really messed up the entire situation. Words come down from above that the Evolution Chamber mission is now our top priority. He got up and walked over to Gavin. Although he was clearly the shorter of the two, his demeanor betrayed not an ounce of weakness. Gavin held his gaze in silence, not letting a sliver of emotion show. The man continued. I'm deploying another squad under you. You must resolve this matter ASAP. That's not necessary. Gavin refused without a moment's hesitation. It's better if I investigate this matter alone. Also, my squad is already at full capacity. That's an order. The man growled his retort, but to his surprise, a cold smile crept across Gavin's erstwhile expressionless face. Not cowed in the slightest, he replied, I have the right not to obey your order. The man was stunned by his candid response. After a few seconds pause, he simply went back to his desk, picked up the document and continued to peruse it. Without looking up, he said, You're not wrong. After all, you are the core of this organization. But the clock is ticking on this matter. Gavin did not respond to the man's final statement. Not long after he stepped out of the room, he suddenly felt unsteady. He reached out to support himself on a wall, but immediately withdrew it before he attracted any unwanted attention, and continued on swiftly and steadily. The windows spaced out along the corridor pulled him into their light and each time Gavin could feel his consciousness slipping off into the distance. He thought of the girl who had recently returned to this world, and a ripple of tenderness welled up in his eyes. But once again, he would cross back into shadow. The ice-cold air would revive his consciousness, and his thoughts would turn to another serious matter. Eli would be the next subject to enter the Evolution Accelerator. It was several days later that Gavin was finally able to get in touch with Eli. The park at night was sparsely lit. When Gavin arrived, Eli was already there waiting for him. He wasn't wearing an STF uniform. Sitting on the bench with one leg propped on the other, he just looks like a normal civilian. Expressionless, he held an unlit cigarette between his fingers. 
Spotting Gavin, Eli assumed his usual casual expression, lifting a hand in a wave. You think anybody will get the wrong idea, us meeting here like this? There's no one else here. Gavin had long grown accustomed to this tone of his. You actually made it on time for once. Oh, after all, this might be the... Eli stopped short and waved a hand, changing the subject. What did you ask me here for? Have you decided? Gavin didn't come right out and say it, but Eli seemed to have already guessed what this meeting was all about. He simply nodded in affirmation. Gavin, perhaps not quite able to understand or accept his response, quietly said, You must know full well the danger involved. Eli looked up at him and laughed unexpectedly. <laughs> You're quite well informed. This matter is supposed to be classified. Before Gavin could respond, he continued. Although that's an issue we can overlook. Gavin furrowed his brow. Not to be thrown off topic, he asked again. Why are you doing this? Why did you leave STF? He turns the question right back around on him. Gavin paused and Eli took the opportunity to light the cigarette in his hand. A spark of the fire making a red speck in the night. He said, matter-of-factly. Isn't danger what we know best? Gavin remained silent, trying to see the emotion hidden beneath Eli's nonchalant expression. But this wasn't something he excelled at. Or perhaps Eli hid it so well that all others could see was what he chose to show. The experiment is starting soon, so I don't know if this is the last time we'll see each other. Before Eli could finish, Gavin interrupted him. You're just going to give up like this? Eli paused. He stood up from the bench, put out the cigarette, and threw it in the trash can. No. I have something that keeps me going, too. He finally broke from that leisurely, nonchalant tone, and then sighed almost imperceptibly. Whether it's Slitten or you or me, one day we're all going to come to this point. But isn't that a good thing? About to leave, Eli put his hand on Gavin's shoulder, giving him a few firm pats. <laughs> Enough with the emotional fireworks. See you later. Then, as if afraid of hearing any more emotional fireworks, he turned and quickly left the park. Gavin didn't look back. He gazed at the lights of the cigarette butt, not yet fully extinguished, as it gradually grew dim and burned itself out. Even a small, twinkling firelight might one day illuminate the darkness. In the following days, sleep had become a luxury. Gavin's stern gaze swept over the fatigue-riddled faces of his squad, lost in thought as he mulled over their next operation. These past few days, they'd received lots of intel as to the whereabouts of the Evolution Accelerator. But each time they arrived on the scene, they found nothing but an abandoned shell. The only thing he was sure of was that STF frequently transported the Accelerated for purposes unknown. And aside from them, there were several other forces also tracking the Accelerator's whereabouts. Back at the base, Gavin dismissed the squad, commanding them to get some rest. He then went on his own to make his report. Before arriving at his destination, he ran into someone putting on their uniform cap as they walked by. This person clearly saw him too and called out to him as he adjusted his hat brim. Gavin, you're just in time. Come with me to the lab. Caught off guard by his words, Gavin froze for a moment and gave the man before him a probing look. Is there something wrong? The man didn't seem to mind his gaze, and said in a tone that was half casual and half warning, There's been a new development regarding the Evolution Accelerator. I think you won't want to miss out on some of the key info. Gavin's eyes flashed. He nodded and followed after the man. He couldn't deny that he did indeed want to learn about the Evolution Accelerator. 
and most importantly, confirm the role that the Queen's gene played in all of it. The instant he stepped into the laboratory, the chill air hit Gavin like a punch to the stomach. He furrowed his brow, then relaxed, as he waited for the person in the room to speak. You can give your report first. The man turned back to face him. Gavin didn't know what he was planning, so all he could do was answer quickly. Before we arrived, the mission objective had already been transported once again. The man wasn't shocked in the least by this result, and promptly turned his attention to the researcher. The researcher in the white lab coat pushed up his glasses and eyed Gavin up and down with an unpleasant, probing look. But he quickly turned away, moving on to another subject with undisguised excitement. Our collaboration with the higher-ups has seen some new research progress. A stream of data and scientific proof spewed from the researcher's mouth, but he was quickly cut off. All right, cut to the chase. We must get to this evolution accelerator first. The researcher slammed both hands on the messy stack of documents, his eyes aglow with an abnormal fervor. It would be of great value as reference material for our research. Gavin looked up and locked eyes coldly with him saying resolutely, The accelerator must be destroyed. I would sooner defile a sacred object. Don't you know what it signifies? It signifies the destruction of the gene strand and the inability to control human progress. That should have been apparent to us long ago. Gavin's hand slammed heavily on the table, and the researcher shrunk back from his intense gaze. Suddenly, the man standing to the side pointed at several words on the screen and asked, Has the evolution core of the accelerator been confirmed? Gavin reflexively wanted to prevent the researcher from talking, but the answer was already spouting excitedly from his lips. Multiple modes of confirmation have shown that this core is indeed the Queen's Evolve. Finally receiving the confirmation he had been waiting for, Gavin withdrew his hands and clenched them tightly at his sides. A million thoughts swept through his mind, like raging waves pounding him down, making it impossible for him to come up for air. All the keys in the hands of one person. Such a rash way to go about things. The man chuckles lightly, neither supporting the researcher's approach nor prohibiting it. He turned to Gavin, this time with an imposing tone that could not be refused. We've given you ample time. If you still can't get it done, I'll have to consider taking direct action. Knowing this was his final chance, Gavin didn't try to argue. Countless thoughts flooded his mind in this brief amount of time, but in the end, all that came out was a grudging grunt of compliance. After another search that turned up empty, Gavin sunk wearily into a chair. Turning his thoughts to the girl, he took out his phone and sent her a text to let her know he was safe. Before he could put the phone away, the screen lit up with an incoming phone call. Seeing the name of the caller, Gavin's eyes lit up in surprise. All right, got it. After the brief phone call, Gavin hung up seeming as if nothing at all was out of the ordinary. He had the car stop at the side of the road, and after giving a few orders, he got out. A squad member in the back asked him where he was going. Gavin paused a moment, but didn't answer truthfully. He thought of what Eli had said on the phone, and a heavy gloom swept over his eyes. The moment the crisis occurred, Gavin had finally determined that the whole thing was a trap starting with the call he received from Eli. This trap may have been directed at the girl, being as she was the key to the evolution core, or it may have been for him. For a moment, Gavin even thought perhaps he shouldn't believe Eli's call, because he clearly sounded a little off on the phone. But the next second he abandoned this line of thinking. When Lee died, he had sworn he'd never leave behind another comrade but the situation had spiraled out of control. Gavin watched as Eli fled in a panic, then slumped down by the tightly shut door, unable to hold himself up any longer. 
He heard the girl's worried voice behind the door. He went to answer her, but reeled under the pain, gasping softly before he could calmly tell her he was okay. Leaning on the broken wall, he prepared to stand up. Suddenly, he heard a peculiar noise in the wind. Perhaps just in the microsecond it took for the thought to register, Gavin made a decision. Wait for me. The instant the explosion rang out, Gavin used the last of his strength to concentrate the wind and carry the girl out of the danger zone. In that moment, the heavens and earth shook. A plume of all-consuming dust and smoke swallowed the collapsed school building. Having lost his Evol's protection, Gavin was pulled down with the sinking floor. As the broken walls crashed down upon him, an intense shock of pain made Gavin lose consciousness for a moment. In the crumbled ruins, the wind stream wrapping around his body was repeatedly torn open and reformed. He couldn't see his surroundings through the darkness. He coughed a few times, his throat filling with the taste of blood. He cupped a hand over a wound in his abdomen, pierced by debris in the chaos. The flowing blood slowly drained him of his body heat and his senses, but he couldn't allow himself to lose consciousness just yet. Suddenly, his communicator began hissing with static, followed closely by an urgent voice. Report your position. I repeat, report your position! But Gavin could no longer hear the voice clearly. The wind swirling around his body slowly turned black, as if merging with the surrounding darkness. Suddenly, that darkness was ripped wide open, throwing off all the collapsed walls and debris piled up around him, exposing the white rays of sunlight which streamed into Gavin's line of sight. The light before him was hazy. As Gavin watched the shadowy figures rush toward him, the only thought running through his mind was, Is she okay? A sudden visitor sent the dim room into a brief silence. Gavin shifted his attention to his somewhat estranged father standing before him. They had now seen each other more times since Gavin had undergone the experiments than in the ten years prior. Next time, don't take on needless operations. As if barking in order, the man referred to his recent operation as needless. The supervisor will receive a warning because of your little stunt. Gavin cut him off coldly. It had nothing to do with him. You are a weapon of NW. Don't forget. If this kind of thing happens again, I will remove every last person involved. He spoke as if making a promise more so than a threat. And then he left just as abruptly as he had appeared. Gavin stared at the door in a daze for several seconds, then got up, put on his uniform jacket, and walked out of the hospital room. The bandaged wound on his abdomen still stung a little, if he hadn't instinctively activated his evil by some sheer force of faith at the time, his injuries would have been far more severe. But even as lucky as he was, he'd undergone over ten hours of treatment. Only now, there were more important things to see to. When the superior officer who was forced to assume responsibility for the ordeal saw Gavin arrive at his office doorway, his usual composed expression finally cracked. He took a few deep breaths, then flashed a stiff smile. I'd like to know what a wounded soldier such as yourself is doing showing up here. I've put in a request to return to the squad to deal with the riots. Gavin got right down to brass tacks. The superior officer didn't seem the least surprised, and instead turned his screen to face him. He paused a moment, then briefed him on the latest circumstances. Finally, he asked him one question. How's your body holding up? Gavin scans the man's expression, which wasn't at all sincere, and responded indifferently. Good enough to not get you demoted. Gavin, do you believe these needless operations are necessary? 
The question was thrown out so casually that Gavin searched his face in astonishment. Observing that same look of resolution on the superior's face, Gavin answered with a rare earnestness. This question is never something one needs to ask others. With no further delays, Gavin assembled his squad and headed out to the scene of the incident. Under the deafening roar of the helicopter blades, Gavin calmly took in updates from the various positions as he deployed the advancement team for the mission. The wrecked bridge was a scene of carnage. Fire and smoke filled the city skies. Gavin had the helicopter set down on the roof of a high-rise building, then rushed off to the scene of the crisis. The dusky rays of sunset lit up the clouds on the horizon. As he stood on the barricaded street, Gavin dialed a number. When the call was picked up, he said, the rest is up to you. In front of him were frightened faces, blaring alarms, the sounds of destruction, and people wearing the white uniforms of STF. Gavin stood there like a naturally formed, impassable chasm. <laughs>